Okay, so for this final part, for the last part here, the back door needs a lot of work done to it to really finish this, top this job off. Uh, the edges are busted here, and this is busted out from someone trying to put a screw through the edge. Uh, I got the holes to fill for this screw, hole to fill for that screw. The back side, uh, the back side needs some work here on the corner, um, and down here on the back end, and things like that. So we'll have to do both sides here, but nothing that shouldn't be too difficult. So let's get this all going and see how this turns out.
Okay, so the back of the machine is now done. Everything turned out quite nicely. Uh, the, ba the back door is not exactly square anymore. So you can see how it has, it's fine there. But as we drift this way, it kind of goes down. But this gap here is good all the way from here, all the way up to roughly here is where it closes in. There's not much I can do. You saw me lifting the bottom to get it to close and it opens and closes just fine. You can see that this gap here is good. All the way down is the same gap. So there's not really any more adjusting that I can do to make this any better. But it still opens and closes just fine. Got a brand new lock. If we turn the key and just open it up, it opens up just fine. And if we close it, it uh, closes just fine. So yep, even though it's not quite square anymore, it's just fine. And everything turned out great. Uh, that bottom corner is all seamed up and both sides actually are all seamed up so the cabinet is extremely solid now compared to how it was and you saw how i was trying to restore these decals this one turned out fairly well but this one has been scraped so the the black ink has scraped and, and mushed its way down so there's nothing i can really do about that but it's a lot better than it used to be so i have to say that this is pretty much complete now the cabinet work is now 100 percent done absolutely completely finished so if we move to the front here, uh, it's time to actually get all the internals back in. Uh, the coin doors are first. Uh, those are complete. You saw that, that part of the process. So we'll get the coin doors back in, get everything wired up and resecured and uh, good to go on that aspect. Get the PCB installed. And I cannot, let's go back around this way. I cannot reuse uh, the power switch does not work because somebody took all the wiring out of the cabinet uh, this is the original connector here for that this would plug into a, another connector on the bottom of the cabinet that would go to the internal switching uh, what that would allow the safety switch to function and all that but all that wiring has been removed and I don't have anything to to replace it with so for now we're gonna have to live without a power switch but that's fine because it's going in the arcade and everything's turned on by circuit breakers so it's not a problem at the moment but if this cabinet ever goes to a, a private collection or an individual or gets sold in the future uh, they're not going to have a working power switch but not really a big deal at this moment so let's get everything reinstalled rewired up ready to go we'll drop the monitor in get the marquee replaced and that should fix up or finish up the pro uh finish up the project <laughs> it's, it's been a long day already i'm sorry that should finish up the project and we can call this done. So stand by for one moment. All right, so it's time to move on to the coin doors here, the coin door boxes more specifically. I've got them removed from the assemblies and you can see there's quite a bit of rust on this stuff. So I'm gonna sand these down, get rid of the rust and then clear them so they don't rust again. But somebody really wanted inside this coin door because it is all <laughs> bent and bashed to hell. So I have to straighten all that back out. Um, but yeah, you can see how bad this is in there. I may not be able to get all of it, but I'm going to try. And then uh, we'll clear them and we'll see how that turns out. But yeah, some water spent a lot of time in the bottom of this bucket. Or this uh, box here. So yeah, so let's get some stuff set up here to sand these down. And then we'll clear them and see how it turns out.
Okay, coin doors are officially done. I decided to go ahead and primer the buckets because it would just look better. I got all the surface rust off, well that I could, from my um, opinion all the surface rust was gone, got rid of all that. And then I decided to go ahead and primer it just so it looks better, uh, more factory look. And then I cleared them so the coin boxes or coin buckets are good. I got the front panels painted up. Uh, this one here is a bit damaged. Um, I don't have a bezel at the moment, so I'll probably replace it in the future. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to leave it. And otherwise, yeah, they're ready to drop back in. Well, that was a task and a half, but it's all done. Everything is reinstalled for the coin doors and reconnected. We have a new power supply installed. This power supply here that was originally powering everything, I don't trust it because it's old. And everybody that supplies this or has it or sells it is out of stock, so I'm not going to use that. So all I'm going to do is take the 110 AC uh, pass-through from the mains input, 
Uh, pass through is going to hook right to the power supply, the new switching power supply I'm going to be using. And then it's also jumpered in for the AC, uh, feeding the isolation transformer and then feeding the wires that run up to the marquee light. So that's all coming off the 110 mains input. And then there's also an out, uh, output from that input connection on the power supply going to the isolation transformer. And the output of that is going, is going to be going to the monitor. So everything is wired in and hooked up. Like I say, I don't have any way to hook up the um, safety switch or the switch on top of the cabinet because all that wiring is gone. I mean, I could. In theory, I could just find the wires that go to the switch and interrupt the uh, hot or neutral AC line. So when I flip the switch, it opens up the hot or, hot or neutral line, flip the switch, and it closes it. But like I say, since this is going to be hooked up to an actual circuit breaker to turn power on and off, um, if I ever go to sell this later down the road or we go to sell it as a business, I can wire that in. It's not a problem. Uh, but for now, I'm going to do it this way. So as soon as you plug in the mains AC or turn the circuit breaker on, everything should come on. So we're feeding power to the, the uh, new power supply, the isolation transformer, and the um, marquee light just raw off the 110 input. And then the outputs go into the transformer to go to the monitor. So we're all ready to go for power. Um, I guess what I'll do next is actually hook up the mains input and turn it on to make sure A, nothing blows up, and then B, we'll test our voltage at our JAMA connector to make sure all of our voltages are correct and, and uh, set properly and on the right pins before we hook up our board. We don't want to destroy our board. So we're going to do that next. Uh, assuming that's all correct and set properly, we'll get the PCB installed, and then we'll get the monitor installed, we'll get the marquee installed, and that'll about wrap it up. So. I guess we'll get the uh, mains AC plugged in and we'll do our voltage testing on our JAMA harness and see what that reads. Okay, let's see what our voltages read. Alright, so we only, only live once. Let's, let's go. One, two, three. Hopefully nothing blows up. Let's see. Nothing blew up. We have a green light on our power supply. So, let's go ahead and check voltage. Let's check our uh, isolated power for our monitor. I installed a connector here off camera. We have 123. 122.9. So we have good isolated voltage from our isolation transformer for our monitor. Uh, we have, can I do this here? Uh, it's not gonna, it's, I'm not gonna be able to show it, but at our JAMA connector, uh, 5.1, which is good. Come on. Am I not on the right ground? What's going on here? There we go. 12 volts, or actually 11.46. So we have 11.46 on our 12 volt rail, which is fine, and 5.1 on our 5 volt rail, which is fine. As soon as I plug a board in, it should drop down to about 5, which will be perfect. So we have our voltage. There's no negative 5 on the Konami game, so it's only 5 volts and 12 volts. So our voltages at the JAMA connector are good. Uh, so I think, oh, uh, let's see here. So that means that we have good voltage at our uh, power supply, good voltage at our JAMA connector, good voltage for our monitor, and I'll bet you, I haven't checked yet, I'm assuming it will, because off camera I installed the marquee light. Let's see if that's working. Yes, it is. So we have everything ready to go. So the next step, I guess, is to get the monitor temporarily laid in here and plug the board in and see if we get an image. Off camera, I cleaned, we saw that I cleaned the monitor, the tube itself, but off camera, I also cleaned the actual chassis and I noticed a couple of blown diodes in the rectifier circuit. I'm not sure how in the heck the board was operating, but it was. So I replaced those two blown diodes, cleaned the chassis, 
and did some uh, solder reflow and did all of the adjustments and pos screen position and size and focus and everything off camera on my test bench. So when we get ready to put this in here, it should drop in and be absolutely perfect as far as settings and ready to go. So let me actually go grab that and we'll slave it in here and we'll get the board plugged in and fingers crossed it works. Alright, here we go. It's in. So let's actually get a good wipe down here because it's all filthy from carrying it around and putting it in there. And we'll see how it looks. One moment. Okay, so I got the board installed. Monitor's all connected and ready to go. If, as we look here, the monitor has never looked better. Nice and clean. Chassis is nice and clean. Everything is beautiful. And we're ready to go. I got the video connected. And if you remember, the sync wire was just being held on by a, the, the actual pin for the socket. was just looped around the, the header pin. So I found a connector and cut a little piece off and it's able to re-terminate that wire into this and now we have an actual correct connection here for the sync wire. And board's hooked up with the audio for the speakers and we know our voltages, our voltages are correct. We got power for our monitor and I think we're ready to go. So let me shut the garage door so we can actually see the monitor. I'm going to have to close the other one too. And... One, two, three. All right, monitor came on. So it's working. The monitor is super crisp, looks absolutely beautiful. But it's hard to show it off like this because of the degaussing it's been sitting you know in the house for a week uh, at a different angle so of course if I move it around this way or move it over to here or whatever what have you it's going to affect the magnetism but uh, I'll see when it comes time to actually show it off complete I'll see if I can uh, degauss it and make it look good so hey we're on the right track so I guess the next step would be to get the board permanently mounted, get all of the wiring and everything associated with that all tied up and secured and, and connected. Or not connected, I'm sorry, tied up, secured, and tidy. Uh, get that all taken care of. And then uh, we'll get the control panel on it, get the marquee installed. I think that'll be it. So stand by here.
All right, mission accomplished on all the wiring. Everything is secure, connected correctly, tied up, routed properly, the whole nine yards. The monitor is super clean, brand new looking, super, super better than it was before. So that's been done, yeah, and everything else is good to go. Uh, board is mounted, wires are tied up, everything is secure. And we are done on the inside. I think we're actually done fully. I think we're 100% complete. Only thing left to do now is to uh, shut the back door and call it done. Off camera, I went ahead and got the uh, free play ROM installed. The free play ROM is that one right there without the cover on it. The window is still exposed. I need to put a cover over it, but had to change that ROM out to make it free play. And I'll explain that here in a moment. But uh, yeah, it's completely finished. So let's get the door shut and get it outside for some beauty shots. Actually, real quick, before we get it outside, I forgot to mention that I got all of these uh, wires and switches and stuff tied up along the harness here that used to go on the bottom side of the cabinet down here for the, the credits. Now, my original intention was to put some black buttons in here, but I'm still waiting on them to show up. Um, I just placed the order because I forgot to order them way back when. So these will have some black buttons here just to, to kind of blend in with the black of the underneath here. Uh, but I also got the remote board mounted for the monitor. And the only thing missing besides these buttons, there's supposed to be a little bracket, an L bracket here that keeps the glass in place. It's missing. I'll have somebody at work make me one. But in the meantime, the control panel actually holds it down quite secure. It doesn't lift up out when this is latched down. So... Uh, that shouldn't be a problem for now. Or really, huh, kind of ever, but anyway, so yeah, I think, except for... Uh, oh, I take that back. There's one coin door light out. These two coin door lights work. This one works. This one's actually missing the uh, assembly here. Uh, the wires are still here for it, but it's... I'll see if I can find one. That's minor, so we'll call it 99.9% .9 complete. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, let's get it outside and show it in the light and the sun and see how it turned out. So I'm not going to talk too much because of the wind, but I'll just do a little beauty showcase here of how it all turned out. Here's the back side. So there you have it guys and gals. This project was about the, uh, let me go back inside here. Actually, let me talk about it. Let me get it back inside so we can showcase some gameplay and show it in action. And then I'll talk a bit more about what I wanted to say here for a moment. 
All right, so what I was going to say was this is probably the most labor-intensive restoration that I've ever done. And I use the term restoration loosely because everything was replaced. I mean, you know, if you go to um, restore the Mona Lisa, but you just cut it out of the frame and put a poster in there, <laughs> it's not really restoration. So it's not technically a restoration. It's a, it's a refurbishment. How about that? But just to say, this is probably the most labor-intensive one I've ever worked on because of all the, the cabinetry work that had to be done. Plus, it's 100 damn degrees every day. I mean, there's sweat pouring off my face the entire day that I'm out here in the garage. So it just makes it even worse. But uh, it's complete. Done. And I'm very, very, very happy with the turnout. So let's go ahead and talk about the free play mod. So basically, uh, Konami did not release any of their games with a free play option. So people have to put those buttons down here. Oh, I have the I have it locked down. People put those buttons under here to act like quarters, and people can come by on, in the arcade and just put you know a thousand lives, a thousand lives, a thousand lives, a thousand lives, and you have to reset the machine. And because the switch doesn't work, uh, I don't want to have to do that. Uh, the only way to re only way to reset it would be to flip the breaker, and of course, yeah, I don't want to have to flip the breaker. So there is. Uh, a forum member out there on the interwebs that created a free play ROM for this and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So we're going to be we're going to be putting the free play ROM in our Turtles machine and other free uh, free play ROMs already in this machine. And the way it works is that you simply press either one of the action buttons and it will start a game. And then you get three lives. And then once those three lives are over and the continue screen pops up, you press the buttons again and, and three more lives. So the most lives you'll ever have at, at any given moment is, is three, and that's going to be uh, much better than walking by and seeing a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand on Ninja Turtles and stuff like that. So, yeah, this will be uh, good to go. So let me go ahead and plug it in. And actually, let me get a tripod set up before I plug it in. That way we can show uh, some gameplay here. So hang on a moment. All right, so I degaussed the monitor, uh, but I don't know how well it will take because when I degaussed it, it was facing the other way. So we'll see if it's still good here. Uh, all right, first time powering up after being all complete. area right here that needs decals, but not too bad. Um, let me get something to put this up higher so we have a better angle at the monitor. Give me a moment. Okay, that's better. There you have it. So, let's test our inputs. Make sure everything's wired up properly. If we go to uh, input output check, uh, player one, left, right, up, down, uh, oh, hang on, left, right, up, down, um, huh, well, it's exiting because I'm hitting player one, uh, shoot one, but player one's good, up, down, left, right, shoot one, shoot two, up, down, up, down, left, right, Shoot one, shoot two, up, down, left, right, shoot one, shoot two. Uh, okay, that's good to go. Let's exit out of here, and you'll see how the free play mod works in, uh, in action here. Okay, so I'm just going to hit uh, Homer's attack button, and it puts four credits on it. You press the attack button again. Homer! Oh, 
So there you go, nice, quick, easy first level. And since you see I have four credits, if I hit attack button on any of the other three players, we can join in at any time. And you only get three lives, so. Block your balloon and go up the magic. Ready? Go! So there we go. Thanks everybody for watching and following along this entire journey. Uh, very happy with the turnout. And for those of you who are watching that are local here to Wichita, uh, this should be at the arcade ready to play by uh, next weekend, hopefully Thursday. This is Sunday. I don't know what day it is. This is Sunday. We, uh, I'll have this ready by this coming Thursday if you're watching it <laughs> relatively soon. What, is, what the hell is today? Where, where's my stupid phone? Uh, okay, over here. Uh, like I said before, it's been a very long day. Um, it is the 8th of August, so um, hopefully by this coming uh, Thursday, this will be ready to go. So thanks for watching, and I appreciate it. And if you come out to the arcade to play it, I hope you enjoy it.